an interesting question from one of our readers on our website was about 16 valve and 8 valve engines. Why are 16 valve engines more efficient than 8 valve engines? And it just enters a realm of exploration as to the technicalities involved. Some manufacturers have gone well over the 16 valve engines. Other manufacturers have done an odd 20 valve design. We're going to talk about the benefits of having more valves. A key point is it's more to do with velocity than volume of air. We're going to look at some of the different setups that manufacturers have used to improve the way the valve works. We're just going to have a little bit of a primer at the beginning so we understand what the valve is, how it is actually working, and how the engine is able to utilize the airflow going into it. And by the end of the video, we'll have a really good understanding and we'll be able to tackle the question of with a 16 valve engine, which has the same valve curtain as an eight valve engine, produce as much power? Are there any benefits if the curtain size is exactly the same? So if you imagine running along with one nostril blocked, you're not going to get very far. It's going to mean you run out of air. And that's effectively what would happen to an engine if it's unable to get enough air into it. The valves are at the top of the cylinder in most instances, and they open and close, allowing air into the engine and allowing the exhaust gases to go out of the engine. The bigger they are, the more air you get into the engine. Why don't they just have one great big inlet valve and one great big exhaust valve? Well, a lot of it is down to velocity and also the mechanics involved with lifting, opening and closing the valves. If the valve is big, it is heavy. It is more prone to bounce or have a valve lift. It doesn't close properly or it doesn't open as effectively as you would want it to. Pop question, if the engine is running at 3000 RPM, how many times per second does the valve open and close on the intake. Let me know in the comment and I'll discuss the answer at the end of the video. If we have a 16 valve engine, it basically means we have four valves per cylinder if it's a four cylinder engine, two inlet, two outlet. If we've got an eight valve, it's half. We've only got two valves for the inlet and the exhaust in each of the cylinders. Now think about velocity. If we had a really wide pipe, and we blew down it to inflate a balloon, we would struggle to inflate that balloon. It would require a lot of effort. If the diameter or the bore of the pipe was reduced, it becomes much easier to blow up the balloon. Now, there are a lot of physics involved in this, but just think about getting air into an engine and you're really in the ballpark of the problem the engine has got. The air needs a velocity of getting in. We're talking about volumetric efficiency. That's basically the volume of the cylinder and how much that can be utilized on the intake stroke. If we've got a turbocharger, that's kind of cheating. We're pushing more air into it. But in all cases, you want the air to get into the engine as quickly as possible at a high velocity. And that aids the fuel mixing with the air and atomizing correctly so you can get a good burn going inside the engine. You'll find that one large inlet flows more slowly than two smaller inlets, even if the curtain size is exactly the same. I mentioned earlier you've got the problem of controlling the valves and a big heavy valve is less easy to control, but the airflow is also easier to control if you've got two valves. Some manufacturers have done clever things. They've perhaps closed one of the inlets at low RPM. The valve still opens, but there's no air flowing through it. And that just guarantees that even at low RPM, you've got a good velocity of air going into the engine. Then at wide open throttle, high RPM situations, that restricts is removed and both valves are able to flow air into the engine and that really guarantees you've got a good amount of velocity at all times going into the engine. You also at the top of the cylinder you want the spark plug, you want the fuel injector if it's a direct injection and you need to fit the inlet and outlet ports. There's a lot going on on that top part of the cylinder. If you've got more valves and they're smaller, you've got more space and you can ideally sight the spark plug exactly in the middle of the cylinder or close to the middle, which gives a really good burn. Obviously, manufacturers have gone with different options and different setup, but having more valves allows a bit better control over the placement of the spark plug and the fuel injection. Typically, one valve 
would have a 45 millimeter setup and two valves would have a 33 millimeter setup slightly smaller but overall you've got 66 millimeters on the smaller valves and you've only got 45 millimeters on the large valve that's about 7.6 percent more circular area and if you think about the valve curtain that's the area around the valve as they open where the air can freely flow into the engine past the valve that has been blocking it or controlling it it means you have a bigger curtain area you can get more air in. but because you're dealing with smaller ports you've still got the velocity there so it really is a win-win situation with variable valve timing you can control the lift and if you've got 16 valves or 10 valves per cylinder as opposed to eight you've got a little bit more control over the air that goes into the engine the graduations are more refined and they just allow you to make better power to get better efficiency from the engine the 20 valve engines and i think about the 1.8 turbo from the volkswagen group that had three inlet valves on the intake side and two exhaust valves. The two exhaust valves were larger than the intake valve sizes and that just allowed you to get more air into the engine for better burn. You can make really good power out of these engines and it was a bit of an unusual setup. Most manufacturers have just stuck with a 16 valve for reasons of simplicity and production costs which kind of makes that 1.8T engine rather special. It's favoured still by a lot of tuning houses and a lot of tuning specialists. Now the valves get particularly hot, they're in the engine during the combustion process and if they are too hot they are going to cause premature ignition, they're going to ignite the fuel in the engine before the engine is actually ready for that ignition. And to control that, manufacturers have actually started fitting sodium filled valves. Now, sodium is a liquid that is very good at transmitting heat away from the end of the valve. And you'll be taking heat away from the bit that's inside the engine and taking it up into the cylinder head where you've got oil and coolant channels to dissipate that heat. And that really does significantly help those valves to be cooler. They've used different metals. You've got titanium valves, which cuts the reciprocating mass it reduces the risk of valve lift valve float and allows you to control the valves more precisely particularly in high performance engines where they're moving very quickly we've got very clever systems controlling valves we've got VTEC which opens really a different cam profile gives a completely different duration at higher rpm we've got valvetronic from BMW that achieves a very similar things that and manufacturers have played with hydraulic control on the valves rather than the traditional mechanical setup it's going to be interesting to see what the developments are going to be in the future of valve and the Volkswagen group have actually used the valve control to shut down two cylinders if you're at light loads they will run on cylinders one and four shutting down cylinders two and three and they do that just by keeping the valves closed creating a cushion of air inside that the pistons will just compress and then bounce off and it allows the throttle to remain fully open at the low rpm situations whereas you'd have let's say 25 percent throttle open and that would introduce quite a bit of turbulence on the intake stream and it really does significantly make the engine more efficient. So our question that we asked at the beginning at 3000 rpm how many times do the valves open and close? Well at 3000 rpm you've got 3000 events per minute. Half of those events are going to be on the intake side so we've got 1500 times per minute that's 25 times per second. You can see how fast these valves are moving and why it is so important that weight is considered when designing a valve train setup. I hope you found this video useful. You've probably got a lot more questions. I've tried not to be too technical. And if you are an engineer, you are probably banging your head on the table at the oversimplification of valve setups. And please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Please educate us and share your thoughts and comments so that we can learn more about valves valve trains and how this car engine actually works. Really appreciate all your comments. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And I've lined up this video and this playlist that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.